Hey everyone, Stacks here. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I'm going to check out Giant Size X Men Jean Grey and Emma Frost number one by Jonathan Hickman. Russell Dodderman is your artist, and Matt Wilson is your color artist, guys. Hey, if you haven't yet, I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button, click the bell for notifications, and make sure you go check out my 4X videos, X Men Fantastic Four, where you can register to win that complete mini series. So this book is going to be interesting to review because there's hardly any dialogue in it. There's a little bit at the beginning, a little bit at the end, but from those two points, there's almost zero in between. But Russell Dodderman, his art absolutely makes up for it because this, I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful book. If you are not into art and the, the art side of it and you don't just like to sit there and get lost in a page for, for a minute as you kind of look at the, the line work and the colors and just how they complement each other. If you're not into that, this may not be an issue for you because there's not really but one big plot point that comes out of this. But if you love you know beautiful flowing art and, and dreamscapes and that kind of thing, then you should absolutely pick this up because uh, like I said, it's, it's beautiful. So let's jump right into the book. The book starts with a couple kids. They're flying around. When they see something, they fly down and they find Storm. And she's passed out, bleeding from her nose and, and mouth, and something's going on. We're rushed into a room inside of Krakoa that has a sign on it that reads, Silence, Psychic Rescue in Progress. And inside, we have Jean Grey, we have Emma Frost, they're getting ready to to go in and begin this 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 process where they're going to try to figure out what is going wrong and why is storm passed out the uh the two come in the two psychics they sit down and they both you know emma has to have a drink before she gets started but they focus their energy and they enter into storm's mind and once they're in there is really where the art takes off it is absolutely stunning the color the, um, the the I mean it's just it's it's beautiful. Like I said, I just can't I can't say enough about the artist here. But uh, they see a tree. It's got Storm's headdress over it, and they begin to walk to it. And in route, they encounter first of all the ground kind of shifts underneath their feet, and then they're left standing toe to toe with these two lions. And these lions seem to be some kind of some kind of protection uh, within the mind of Storm, and they. They sit there and question, you know, basically, what business do you have here of um, with Storm? And, you know, Jean Grey spells out friends. And then, you know, with with the dirt, rises it up and, and, and molds it to her and Storm embracing another. Well, when Emma does the same thing, it's her and Storm fighting. And, well, the this... This I don't know what, what do you want what do you want to want to call it this totem basically isn't having it turns to a snake and attacks Emma. Emma transforms to her diamond form and is you know quickly slammed to the ground and Jean slapped away and it's not a problem though I mean Emma's handling it she's fighting this thing punches it shatters one of its fangs but uh, once Jean gets in the fight it's over she just completely obliterates this thing just grabs it with her mind and just tears it to pieces. She then takes that energy and reforms it into an elephant with butterfly wings and they hop on the elephant and they fly off to the tree. And once they arrive there, that's when we finally are encountered with the presence of Storm. From here, I'm gonna skip quite a bit because it really just goes into a dreamscape that they, they climb through and able to get to the top of this tree and I mean, it's it's really trippy and it's really cool. It's um, if you remember Trad uh, Trad Moore's art from Silver Surfer, it's it's got some of that elements to it, but but different. It's uh, the the trippy psychedelic kind of uh, imagery. Trad Moore's art probably not a good description because his is a lot more bubbly looking. It's it rounder. It, I mean, this is still sharp art. Um, but it's very Alice in Wonderland-ish, if you know what I mean. And if you don't know what I mean, then I highly recommend buying the book and checking it out for yourself, because it's it's pretty cool. Anyways, once these two get through this dreamscape, they, they encounter a, a golden egg. But at the bottom of that egg, and spreading out from it, is the what looks like the techno-organic virus. 
And as this thing splits open, initially there's nothing inside of it. And the two are like this metal machine. They're, they're confused by it. But then there's this flower that comes up from the middle of it. They are kind of not sure what to do at first. So Emma just kind of shrugs, grabs it, and starts trying to pull it. When they do, you can see that the roots are rooted into this. And it's... And what they pull up is like this round set of teeth almost. It almost looks like teeth, like a, the mouth of a leech or something with this inset layers of, of, of really sharp teeth. And in the middle of it is Storm. And she stands up and Jean looks her in the eye, but when Jean places her hand on the side of her face and pulls it away, it comes away like, like some nasty sticky putty. And you have underneath you have Storm's face, just this completely metal looking Terminator thing going on. And then you get this just electric scream of save me and she collapses down to the floor and you can see the concern in both Emma and Jean's eyes as they just lay there and she, she lays down with her, she wraps her up. Outside you have Cyclops and Wolverine waiting with the silence sign still up and when finally Gene and Emma come back through, they inform us that, look, the children of the vault gave Storm a machine virus that's gonna kill her in the next 30 days. We need to talk. Going back to the fight, the last fight between the children of the vault and the X-Men, the only thing that really happened is while they were at the vault, they were attacked by some drones and, and she was shot by one of them. She was blasted, but Armor managed to catch her um, she, she didn't appear to be hurt at the time at all, but we find out that she is somehow infected by this. Now, interesting enough, Storm is one of the X-Men who has not died yet in House of X and Powers of X. She didn't go on the mission to, um, to take out the Mother Mold. She hasn't been really involved in anything else where she's been wounded or injured, so it, we could possibly end up seeing Storm going through the uh, resurrection process. Anyways, I am interested to see where they go with this storyline. The I don't know if they're going to just tie this back into the main X-Men story uh, because the next the preview that it shows is actually the giant size X-Men Nightcrawler number one. So I don't know where they're going. Is is Nightcrawler going to tie into solving this? I assumed the Nightcrawler issue would be a, a spinoff, uh, you know, focusing on him, but. I know they, they also have a giant size X-Men number one storm announced, so it makes sense that possibly it wraps up over there. A whole lot of giant size X-Men is coming out, and they seem like they're going to be interesting one-offs, which ironically is kind of what X-Men has been at this point, the actual X-Men title. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for this one. Really a shorter review, but it's really hard to, I mean, the art's good and it's not a lot of dialogue, so... I, I would recommend it, especially if you are into sitting there and, like I said, getting lost in a page. If you are a dialogue-driven individual, this is probably not the book for you, and you probably you know got everything you're going to get out of it right here. But anyways, guys, as always, support your local comic shop. If you can get out and pick something up, absolutely do so. I just got done diving through some back issues, picked up a couple old Amazing Spider-Man issues that I was missing from my collection, and looking forward to sitting down and flipping through those. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, comment down below, and hit that bell for notifications so as new videos pop up, you get informed. Also, if you haven't checked out my Fantastic Four and X-Men videos, go make sure to register to win. All you gotta do is subscribe, like the video, and comment on those two videos, and just just keep that up as I go through that series, and you, you can win the entire um, Fantastic Four X-Men series, man. It's going to be, it's been a good book. Chip Zdarsky's been killing it over on that. It's quickly become one of my favorites. It's one of the ones I'm looking forward to every week when it comes out. So y'all go check that out. Anyways, that's all I got. 